I want to encourage you all to continue working hard. Uh, what you should have noticed is that your grades were updated a little bit in PowerSchool. I still have a few more grades to input from Unit 2, including your test grade. So that will move your grade more. But you can check PowerSchool to see where you currently are and see if there are any missing assignments. Quite a few of you do have missing assignments. So again, I want you all to, to think about how you can give me some feedback to help you get these assignments turned in. They are important. They're so important, not only for your grade, but also as we think about preparing for these tests. So take power school, see what you're missing, make sure that my records are matching up with what your records are. If you think you may have done something and it's not reflected there, just let me know. It's probably a simple mistake. If you do go back and you do some missing work, let me know. Um, and I'll be sure to get, put those grades in. But uh, check and see where you are. If you're missing assignments, let's think critically and seriously about what we can do to get those missing assignments turned in. It's never too late. I want to encourage you all to get as much work done as possible. The goal for me is not the grade, it's the learning. Uh, the goal is obviously still to pass the class and to do well in the EOC exam. But in order for you all to actually learn this material, to take something from this class, it will require that you're doing those asynchronous assignments. That being said, we do have a warm up today as we do every day. The warm ups are so important. Thank you, Monet, for letting me know because the warm up, the warm ups have questions that are going to mirror exactly the types of questions you all will see on the exam as well as on the EOC exam. So please take these six minutes, guys. We have built in time in class for you to work. There's no reason for you to not be doing these assignments. We've got six minutes at the beginning of class to do the warm up. We've got 35 minutes typically at the end of class to do the asynchronous assignment and the exit ticket. No excuses as to why you shouldn't be using those that time to do the work. Oops. All right, I'm putting myself on mute for six minutes so you all can get this done and then we'll jump into the lesson. Warm up unit three, day two.
Okay, so that was six minutes. Again, I cannot emphasize warm-ups enough. They really, really are helpful because even if you don't do well at them, they give you insight into what the actual test questions will look like. I've also told you all this, but I will say it again. I will reiterate it. The warm-ups can be done multiple times. You have unlimited tries on the warm-ups. So you can go through them and test and see how well you have understood the concept. Okay, so today is February 3rd, 2021. Today's lesson will be about mitosis. It is the second day of our third unit. Today we've got the same objective as we did yesterday, but this time we're really going to hone in on this concept of mitosis. So biologists will be able to analyze how cells grow and reproduce in terms of the cell cycle and its three phases, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. The essential question today, how does a cell pass its genetic information to the next generation? So I'll take some time to pause on this screen so that you all can write down the title and the date, the unit, whatever you need to write down to make sure that you're taking good organized notes throughout this lesson. And I will also use this time while folks are still writing to mention that some of you are still missing exams. So you need to set up an appointment with me to find the time to do that exam. Otherwise, it will go into the grade book as a zero. And that will really hurt your grades. All right, so I wanna be as flexible as possible. There's time available in the morning. There's time available during advisory. There's time available after school. Uh, you just need to be the one to reach out to me. That's what being a, a proactive and independent and mature student looks like. I'm not going to be expected to reach out to you. If you know that you did not take your test, it is your responsibility to set up an appointment with me. And to keep that appointment, if you make one. <laughs> I've had an issue over the last few days with people scheduling appointments and, and I'm just sitting here by myself for 30 minutes. So please, when you do make an appointment, make sure you put it into your phone calendar, make a reminder, write it down, whatever you need to do to remember that, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be meeting with Mr. Rudd today. Or if you're not able to keep the appointment, no big deal, things always come up. But the good thing to do would be to communicate. Say, hey, Mr. Rudd, I know it's last, last minute, but I can't make the appointment anymore. No big deal, thanks for letting me know. At least now I don't have to sit here for 30 minutes by myself. <laughs> All right. So a quick review of the cell cycle, which was what we introduced yesterday. The first part of the cell cycle is gap one. And during gap one, we can also think of it as the G standing for growth. The cell is growing in size and it's also making more and more um, organelles. It's getting ready to divide. Does anybody remember what comes after gap one? Hopefully you all do because hopefully you all wrote it down. But what comes after G1? Thank you, Jason. After G1, we've got S, which stands for synthesis. And during the synthesis phase, what's happening is the DNA is being copied. The cell is making a copy of its DNA. That's why we call it synthesis, because it's synthesizing new DNA. It's making a new copy of the DNA. And then what comes after S? Thank you, Rudy. Then after S, we've got G2 stands for gap two. Now all of these are, these three phases, G1, synthesis, and G2, they're all a part of what's called interphase. And interphase is the longest phase of the cell cycle. For the majority of a cell's lifespan, it will be an interphase. But today we're gonna move a little bit beyond that and start talking about M phase. And we'll also talk about 
cytokinesis today as well. We did introduce both of those phrases yesterday. Hopefully you all have that definition written down. Not, uh, we will talk more about it today, but please guys, make sure you're taking strong notes. And for those of you who almost never speak up and, and give any answers, please consider doing that. Conquer your fears, your shyness, whatever it is. Um, but I frequently get answers from Jason and Rudy and Abraham and Breon. I want to hear from some different folks today and Kathy. So let, let me let me get some different voices represented today. Neftali, I don't hear from you much. Monet, Michaela, Ayana, let's hear you, let's hear your voices today. Even if you're not sure that you might that you might not have the right answer, even if you're not confident in your answer, that's okay. Being wrong is just an indication that I need to still do my job a little bit better. All right, so. Uh, conquer those fears today, and let's make sure we can get some some other voices represented. Okay, we talked about this yesterday, but we know that there's a clear difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. Um, does anybody remember some of the differences that we discussed? What are some differences between sexual and asexual reproduction? Feel free to take yourself off of mute. That way we don't have to wait for folks to type. Okay, so Rudy says copy of itself. Um, which one would be a copy of itself? Would that be sexual or asexual? Good, so organisms that make copies of themselves are undergoing asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, reproduction involves two organisms, one organism that provides the sperm and another organism that provides the egg. So we'll talk more about that. But typically, multicellular organisms, animals, plants, fungi, those organisms do sexual reproduction. Unicellular organisms are engaged in asexual reproduction. They basically just make copies of themselves. All right, skipping that. <clears throat> so mitosis. Now, please, please, please remember, this is so important that interphase has to come before mitosis. The cell has to copy its DNA before it can undergo cell division. I cannot understate that. So highlighted in pink at the top of this slide, interphase has to occur before mitosis. Once it begins mitosis, mitosis is defined as the cell division process which makes somatic cells and unicellular organisms. Somatic cells are the body cells. Everything that is not a sperm or an egg cell is a somatic cell. Okay, so not only does mitosis produce those somatic cells, those body cells, but it also allows unicellular organisms to make copies of themselves. We can see a really rudimentary image, depiction of mitosis on the right side of the screen. 
again, it doesn't matter if it's being used to make somatic cells or if it's being used for a unicellular organism to make a copy of itself. Either way, interphase has to come first. Wait, can you go back? Yes. Okay, I'm done. All right. Thank you, Brianna. So mitosis. Mitosis is one round of cell division. And the results of that one round of cell division are two identical diploid daughter cells. There are a lot of terms there. So mitosis is one round of cell division. At the end of that one round of cell division, the results are two identical, meaning they are copies of each other and copies of the parent cell diploid daughter cells. A diploid is a cell that has paired chromosomes, so one from each parent. Typically, we represent diploid or diploidy with this notation, 2n, 2n. Remember, di means 2. Now, if we look at this image in the bottom right of your screen, we can see we start off with a parent cell. Before we can undergo cell division, we have to replicate the DNA. So as you can see, we make a copy of this blue chromosome. We make a copy of this green chromosome. If we didn't make a copy, then these two resulting daughter cells would not have enough genetic material. We've got to make a copy first, and then we can undergo cell division. So mitosis, one round of cell division that results in two diploid, genetically unique, I'm sorry, genetically identical daughter cells. Genetically identical. They are copies of themselves and copies of the parent cell. There are four phases of mitosis. So go ahead and copy these down. We will go uh, into each of these phases separately. But mitosis is made of four phases, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, so prophase comes first. The prefix P-R-O, pro, that means before. So that should help you remember it. Pro means before, that means it comes before everything else, it's first. During prophase, the nuclear membrane dissolves. 
So this means we're talking about the enclosure, the membrane that keeps the nucleus together. It disappears. And this means that the chromosomes are now exposed to the rest of the cell. The chromosomes that were once inside of the nucleus are now exposed. What starts off as chromatin, which we talked yesterday about, condenses into chromosomes. So it starts off as this tangled up bowl of spaghetti and it condenses itself into chromosomes, which, is, which are more organized and they're tightly wound. And then also during prophase, we see two structures form. These structures are called centrioles and spindle fibers. Centrioles are represented in orange in this image, and they are basically like a motor. The spindle fibers are kind of like a, uh, what am I, a fishing line. So imagine you had a fishing line and you attached it to a motor. The motor is the centriole. The line itself is the spindle fiber. Once you cast out that line and you attach it to the motor, the motor is going to reel it back in really quickly. It's pulling the, the fishing line back in. Okay, so we see these structures start to form and they're going to, they are absolutely essential in this process of cell division. The second step of mitosis is called metaphase. The prefix meta, M-E-T-A, means middle. And we call it this middle phase because the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell, in the equator of the cell. And once they're there, the spindle fibers, which again are kind of like those, the fishing line, the spindle fibers are going to attach to the chromosomes. And then the third step of mitosis is called anaphase. Ana is a prefix that means apart. So in this third step, those spindle fibers, which attach to the chromosomes, are going to pull the chromosomes apart and start pulling them towards different sides of the cell. We can see that process. Now the centrioles, again, they're like the motors. The centrioles are basically proteins that are actually doing the pulling. The spindle fibers are just attached, right? So 
when you when you go fishing and you catch a fish, I know probably many of you have not been fishing, but um, you reel it in. It's not that the fishing line is being pulled back in. It's you that's doing the pulling when you're reeling the fish back in. So the centrioles are like, like I said, they're like that motor that's actually reeling, reeling the uh, sister chromatids back in. And the fourth and final step of mitosis is called telophase. Telo is a prefix that means in. So the cool thing about all four phases or all four steps of mitosis is that if you can remember the prefix, then you are in a great position to remember what actually happens in the step and when it happens. So telophase, telo means in. This is not only because it's the last step, of mitosis, it's the end of mitosis, but also because the sister chromatids are being pulled towards the ends of the cell. And the cell is going to start to actually cleave, which means it gets pinched in the middle. It's starting to almost separate into two new cells. Also important in this step, the nuclear membranes will start to reappear. So remember in the first step, they disappeared and that exposed the chromosomes. Now they are going to reappear in order to protect the chromosomes. We recreate the nucleus. And this, and this time we end up with two nuclei because we're starting to form two new cells. So prophase comes first, metaphase is second, anaphase is third, and we end mitosis with telophase. After mitosis, we have to go through this process of cytokinesis. We talked about this yesterday. Cyto means cell, kinesis means movement. So cytokinesis literally means cell movement. The cell that once was just one thing is now going to split apart and two cells are going to be moving away from one another. Parent cell completely cleaves or splits into two new daughter cells. All right, 
So here is the entire thing put together. Interphase, of course, comes first. <clears throat> the cell grows. We've got to make a copy of the DNA. We need synthesis. We need to copy the DNA before we can go through cell division. After we copy the DNA during S phase, we go to G2. The cell continues to grow. It's preparing itself for cell division. It's making more organelles. It's starting to separate those organelles into different places in the cell. And then we go through mitosis, those four steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis. We end up with two new cells. So this is a great image to take a picture of. Again, we can see that interphase is the longest part of the cell cycle, but this gives you the entire cell cycle all in one depiction. We copying this chart down. I said you could take a picture of it. You can write it down if you want to. I can leave it up. Let me see what comes. Just give me one second. I'll come back to the slide. Uh, we have a little bit more to. I'll come. I'll leave this up at the end of the lesson. But let's let's keep going for now. All right. So looking at these images, can you all in the chat tell me which one comes first? Which picture would come first in the order of cell division? I'll give you a hint. It really starts before mitosis. It really starts with interphase. That's why there are five pictures. Yes, prophase is the first step of mitosis, Jason. You're right. But which of these pictures comes first? Good. Thank you, Rudy. Um, so, Ardeja, you said one. Now, remember, we can already start to see that the cell, in this case, is starting to split into two. So this definitely can't come first. Um, the cell can't split into two until much later in the process. This is, one of, this is going to be one of the last steps. So Rudy is right. Number two is the first step here. What comes after number two? So number two represents interphase. The, the, the cell has been growing, and it also made a copy of its DNA. So after that, we're going to actually start mitosis. Which picture represents that? No, not number one. Not number three. What's good? Thank you, Ardesia. All right. So <laughs> let's. Um, what what is the actual first step of mitosis? What's it called? What is the first step of mitosis called? Prophase, thank you, Ardesia. And what happens in this first step? What happens during prophase? The membrane dissolves, excellent. So in order for you, I'm sorry, in order for us to identify these pictures, We've got to know what happens during the steps. During interphase, the cell grows, the DNA is copied. So that's got to be number two. Ardesia is 100% right that during prophase, the membrane is dissolving. We can see a basic picture of that. That's why the membrane, instead of it being a solid line, instead of the nuclear membrane being a solid line, here it appears as a dashed line. And you will often see that. That represents that the cell is starting to, the nuclear membrane is starting to disappear. There's also another important feature in this picture that should tell us that it's prophase. What is it? What else happens during prophase? We should have already written it down. The chromatin condenses into uh, chromosomes. That's, that's right, Jason, you're right about that. We can't really see that in these pictures, but you are right that 
some pictures will depict that. There is one other thing that I'm really trying to get at here. All right, let me go back. Let's look at prophase. This is why it's so important that you all are taking notes. Hopefully you wrote everything down. That's why we highlight these things. That's why we have these slides. Thank you, Brianna. This, this spindle fibers are forming. The centrioles and the spindle fibers form. So if we go back and look at this, this picture, we can see centrioles. They always look like two cylinders that are perpendicular to one another. And we can see the spindle fibers, those these strings that are kind of stretched out across the cell, they're starting to form. So, so far we know number two is first, number four is second. What comes after that? Good, number three. And what is this step called, Ardesia? Mm, we skipped one. Metaphase. Thank you, Rudy. Yeah, metaphase. So we started off. Number two is the first picture. It represents interphase. Then we start mitosis. Number four is going to be the second picture, but it's the first step of mitosis, which is prophase. And then Ardesia tells us that number three is the third picture, and she's correct about that. And Rudy tells us that this is called metaphase. And it's called metaphase because we can see the chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. That's why it's called metaphase. Meta means middle. So what picture comes after that? Number one, thank you, Brianna. And what step of mitosis does this represent? Anaphase. And what does ana mean? A-N-A. -A. Did anybody write, write that down? What does A-N-A -A mean? Not to be a part of, Jason, but to pull apart. Yeah, to, it means apart. So I can see why you would think that, Jason. That's probably on us for writing the slide that way. But it's not to be a part of something. It means to be pulled apart. And we can see that happening in picture number one. We can see that the spindle fibers are literally pulling the chromosome apart. We went from picture three to picture two. So they started off attached in the middle, and then they get pulled apart. And that leaves us with only one picture. Number five is the last step. And what is the last step of mitosis? What's the last step of mitosis called? Telophase, excellent. All right, so this is the kind of stuff that you all will be asked to do on your exam. Give me one second, I'm sorry. You all will be asked to identify pictures like this and, and tell me which orders they should be placed in um, in order to correctly order the process of cell division. So if this was difficult for you, um, we really, really need to make sure that we're getting time on the schedule for some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Some of you I don't ever hear from, you're missing a lot of assignments. There's no way for me to know what you know. As your teacher, I can only support you if I know what your gaps are, all right? So um, help me out. I'm not asking you to even meet me halfway, but this, can you get 30% of the way and I'll get 70%. Um, but we've got to be able to figure this out, folks, because um, this is important stuff. This is probably one of the most important units of the class. Okay, one more concept for today's lesson. <clears throat> so during mitosis, we start off with a parent cell that is a diploid or a diploid and we end up with two daughter cells that are also diploids. What this means is that 
the daughter cells will have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So if the parent cell has 46 chromosomes, then the daughter cells will have 46 chromosomes. The only way that you can do that is if you first copy the DNA. So if I start off with 46, I've got to make a copy of my DNA to get up to 92. And then I can split in half again, and both of my daughter cells will now have 46. So we make copies of the DNA in order to ensure that the daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell in order to ensure that they are both diploids. So for a banana, an example, bananas have 14 chromosomes. So what number should go in this circle right here after a banana duplicates its DNA? What number should be here? Thank you, Ardeja. We should have 28 in this second circle because let's go back. We need to make a copy of the DNA first, Jason. Had we just immediately split it in half, then the daughter cells wouldn't have the correct number. So first we need to make a copy. This needs to be 28. Oh, this needs to be 28. And then we can split it and create 14. All right. So we've got 26 minutes left in class. There is, of course, an exit ticket that is important, and there is, of course, a new asynchronous assignment. It's called mitosis practice. 25 minutes should be enough time for you all to get both assignments done. So I want to see everybody working. I will be here on mute if you have questions. But there's no excuses as to why you should not be using this time to be productive and get your assignments done.
Cindy, are you available to take your test today? I need you to get that done. We can do it right after class if you're available. And who else is it? Uh, it's Cindy, let me know if you're available to take your test today. Okay, folks, it is now 1135, so you all are good to go. I will talk to you all tomorrow. I appreciate your time today. And please, please, please stay on track with these assignments. If you need any help, let me know. But I did see quite a few of you doing what you were supposed to be doing today, so that's a good sign. Keep, keep working hard, keep doing the exit tickets, and keep doing these asynchronous assignments, and it will pay off.